Welcome back to Grit Gym. I'm Adam. This is Tori. Today we're talking about fats and why you should be super scared of them. Why don't, they're going to make you fat and you're never going to get fit in your pants if you ever have any fat in your diet. You better just get rid of fat. All the fat. I just kind of suck, man. <laughs> <laughs> so no more bacon. Sausage. No more milk. No more ice cream. Huh. No more sausage. No more That's eggs. I draw the line. Yep. I'm done. I'm out. Nothing. No more beef. No more avocados, no nuts, Those are delicious. no almonds. There's like fat in pretty much everything. Like you can't get away from it. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. So that's what we're getting into. We're getting into fats. And, uh, and uh, uh, take everything that I just said sarcastically. Um, I realize I have a very dry sense of humor. However, um, should you be scared of fats? Like, and are you, like, if I eat fat, is it just going to go right to my stomach? Is it going to go to my fat? Pretty much, yeah, you're screwed. <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> okay, thanks for letting me off the hook there. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, so what do we need to know about fat? Uh, you need it. Um, so what fat is, so... You need it? You need Like you fat. literally need it? You, like to survive or to thrive or because it tastes good? Why do I need it? Well, option D, all of the above. Oh, okay. Um, so fat, so what happens when you have like a bodybuilder, when their body fat is extremely low, so like for males, like below like 5%, I think for females, but like 15 or 10% or something like that, where it's yeah, super don't quote the numbers. low, I don't yeah, know. Very low. Very low. Um, what happens is your body doesn't have enough energy. And so it's just like, well, shoot, like what am I gonna do now? So it's actually gonna start shutting down systems that aren't necessary. So the first one is most likely going to shut down is your reproductive one, because you, you don't well you don't we don't reproduce like that, so so it's going to shut that down. It's not necessary to the survival of the individual. Correct. Yes. Yeah, that's a better way to put it. In the mo uh, momentary sort of lifespan, yes. Uh, if you have to survive till next month, you, you can do so without your reproductive function at, at that time. And when that happens, then it's going to not produce the horm your sex hormones and stuff like that. And yeah. your hormones are just going to go out of whack. So, yes, you need fat. Yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't even thinking from the endocrine system function. I, from yeah. As far as, like, uh, like for instance, uh, with the egg yolk and, the, and beef and the cholesterol, you have to have cholesterol to make testosterone. Yeah. Like, it's... There's a reason necessary. that we need it. Yeah, um, especially in today's world where uh, male testosterone rates are plummeting. Uh, we have about half the testosterone that our grandparents did. Um, and girls' oh, testosterone wow. rates are going up. They're skyrocketing. So it's causing a lot of problems for both of the genders, sexes. I don't know, whatever the political correct term is. But anyway, um, okay, so we need it. Um, yeah. And is there such thing as a non-essential fat? So we went over essential and non-essential in the last video. So essential would mean that if we don't get in our diet, uh, we can't make it. So we have to get it from our diet. Non-essential would mean we can produce it on our, on our own. No, I I'm trying to think. I, we generally can't produce. Even if, you, even if so, I think you're splitting yeah. hairs. Like, it is almost yeah. a silly question for me to ask. Um, so Dang it, Adam. I know. <laughs> but it is an essential macronutrient. You cannot produce your own fat. Mm -hmm. you, um, you do not need carbs, but you have to have protein and you have to have fat. Um, I'm, right. not a key, I'm not like saying that keto is the way or trying to convert anybody. It's just a natural, like biological thing that we know of. Yeah, yeah um, and like your body has plenty of storage of fat, but like... True, still. there is a difference between dietary fat and, uh, and storage. So like the fat that you have when you feel underneath your skin and you're like, ooh, like, like you reach down and you feel a little bit of fat. Uh, versus the the fat that's floating around in your blood from the food that you ate a few hours ago. Yeah. Um, there's stuff to say. Like you can, fat is very pork dense, so yeah. you can get too much of it. Right. Um, but if you get too little of it, then that's bad too. So it's kind of like on a spectrum, but that's pretty much everything. Yeah. It's on a spectrum for right. everything. Um, if all you did was eat, eat uh, 
I don't know. You can't just sit around and drink olive oil all day and think you're healthy. Just eat a stick of butter. I'll be fine. Sticks of butter. Not Sticks of butter. Even You'll if it's grass-fed. You'll be fine. <laughs> Even You'll if it's grass-fed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so we have dietary, we have storage of fat, and then we have dietary fat, and they're two different things. And when you eat, eventually it gets filtered through your metabolic processes, goes through your veins, goes into your muscles, does all this mm -hmm. stuff, and then you get energy from that fat. Now your body can uh, take the fat that's in the blood and turn that into energy, or eventually if you're in enough of a caloric deficit and uh, your body isn't under tons and tons of stress and you've worked out in the accurate ways, you'll start to go into the fat that's around your midsection and that will allow you to get rid of it. But right. um, I think what we're really trying to get across in the video here is to not be scared of fats because there are tons and tons of uh, positives to fats. Uh, yeah as long as you're not taking the negatives with them. So uh, let's talk a little bit about animal fat versus plant fat. So, right. and um, we can also get into unsaturated and saturated here, obviously. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, what I learned mostly is just, they didn't get too much into the animal versus plant. Um, they talked more about like the saturated, unsaturated and trans fat. Yeah. Um, but animal fat, it's still good for you. Like, you don't have yeah. to like get that fat be like off the steak. Be like, ew, gross. Yeah, if you're cutting the fat off of your steak, you, you you're missing out on an extreme bit of uh, of uh, uh, of like pleasure and satisfying, uh, uh, which is a big deal in the nutrition game. Um, but also, you're missing out on the nutritional benefit of that fat. Uh, it's probably not the terrible thing that it's been made out to be, especially if it's no. grass-fed beef. I joked about it a little while ago, but if it's grass-fed beef, it's much higher in conjugated linoleic acid. Which but, is good for you. Um, and this is kind of funny talking with Tori about this because uh, there's a little over a decade between the two of us in terms of education and uh, experience. Um, late, uh, so late 80s, um, the, the anti-sugar thing kicks in early 90s, the low fat thing k get, kicks in. Everybody thinks that uh, cholesterol is gonna kill you, clog up your arteries, and you're all gonna die, right? Uh, the saturated versus unsaturated fat, the animal versus plant-based uh, fat debate starts. Uh, here we are now, 2020. We basically concluded that uh, genetics has such a heavy component into this debate that it's almost silly to look at um, saturated versus unsaturated fat at this point. Um, and talk about a debate that there is so much awful research in this debate that most of it should not even have been published. So, um, but there, there is something to go by here. And saturated basically just means that it's solid at room temperature. Unsaturated means that it's not solid at room temperature. Um, right. And if you get into the chemistry of it, it basically just means that there's an extra hydrogen ion uh, or an extra hi hydrogen in the, uh, not ion, a hydrogen in the, uh, in the, compound and that's how they took uh, olive oil and made it into Crisco uh, but essentially they just made plastic that's plastic that's low low grade plastic uh, so you, nice when you eat Crisco <laughs> yeah when you eat Crisco you're just eating plastic and plastic is terrible for your endocrine system so something to think about there um, so we went over the good or the bad uh, is it good or bad uh, and what about you mentioned trans fat what do we need to know about this that is the one you actually do need to stay away from. Studies have shown that trans fat is actually not the greatest for you. So. <laughs> yeah, and that's going to be like more in like your foods that just stay on the shelf for like forever and ever because yeah. that's how they make it stay on the shelf right. forever and ever. Yeah, um, trans fats just have a higher shelf, a uh, longer shelf life, so they can. Uh, food ne didn't necessarily get cheaper uh, in terms of the cost to the producer, they were able to hold it on the shelf for longer so then they could sell it at a lesser price. Um, yep. But, so what are some of the effects? Uh, where else do we find it? So we found it in processed foods. What about fast foods? You find it a lot there? You betcha. Yeah. What about in your garden foods? In some garden foods, yeah, in garden foods, like there's gonna be fat in pretty much everything. But trans fats, are you? Oh, gonna, like, trans fats, not no. Okay, there you have it. <laughs> I thought we were talking about. So if fat. you grow your own food or you you buy fresh food, you're less likely to have trans fat. Yes. Well. Okay. 
it could be like a broad stroke here, but like trans fat is just more man-made than anything because yeah. they found a way to make this hamburger patty last months and months so people don't have to throw away. Yeah. yeah, at some point you do have to question, like I definitely don't think that there's like good and bad is kind of a silly term to put on things, but is there good and bad food? I don't know, but there does get to a point where I'm not sure if we can really call this food anymore. I'm not sure if we can call Cresco food anymore. I'm not sure if we can call certain fast food chains food. Well, you can eat it, and it might give you some calories, but is it really food? It's, it's on like a spectrum. Like, there's different quality. Like, so those fast foods and the foods that you can, um, have like five years later and it's still going to taste the same. They're going to be <laughs> a little bit of the lower quality versus the ones that you make yeah. fresh. Um, because just like anything like micronutrients and all that, like they're not going to last forever. Yeah. They're just, yeah. They're just, and they are going to disperse. Yeah. And there, there is something to you. So like we haven't talked about fish oils yet. And so right. we'll get into that after this, but, um, if you're not getting, uh, so fish oil has got a bad rap. Uh, like 10 years ago, we basically took care of it through the filtration process where fish oils were thought to uh, have all these, they, they did, they had all these heavy metals and I hate the word toxins because it's so, just so silly, but they all, there's all this toxic material in it, we'll say it that way. Um, and they really, uh, a lot of them were not good for us. So unless you bought very, a very high quality, high priced fish oil, you're probably doing more damage to your body than good. I uh, basically yeah. took care of that problem. What we didn't take care of was the shelf life that uh, some of these producers were willing to keep their products at uh, on, and then still sell them. And people were having major, major, major issues off of this. Um, they were having like, I mean, major brain issues. So, uh, and basically what we found out is that rancid oils are terrible for you, but you probably didn't even know it. So. Um, and I, the last time that I looked, it was something like 70% of the uh, store-bought oils, like olive oil, canola oil, that kind of stuff, were all rancid. Oh, that's nice. And so you're doing yourself this really awful thing. So there are certain areas where you just don't want to skimp on the, the types of oils that you do. Fish oil is one of them. Olive oil is another one. Um, you probably want to seek out uh, the darkest uh, or the the... The bottle that can let that lets in the least amount of light will be a, a, a an assisting factor uh, for all of the oils that you're going to buy. Um, and there's certain things that you're going to feel weird about buying. Like you probably don't want to buy. You're going to feel weird about buying lard. Who cares? Use it. It's going to be absolutely fine. Beef lard um, or pork lard. Uh, it's going to be absolutely fine for you. So uh, if you're using it in moderation, the way that you should. But not just doing scoops and scoops. Right. But it's going to be better than. Uh, Crisco type stuff because you're essentially eating plastic. Um, anyway, why would we have uh, what that was supposed to lead into fish oil, but it didn't do a very good job, did it? Um, but why would we take fish oils? Uh, well, because fish oils they are full of it's called omega 3s. So, with omega, omega, man. Uh, um, so, in our diet naturally, with the fats that we do eat, like olive oil and stuff like that, they are full of omega 6s. So, those are more, if you think of it, inflammatory versus the omega 3s, they are anti inflammatory. You're really getting into the chemistry of it now, huh? Like the hydrogen ions? I could have left yeah. that out. Oh, bummer. Oh, oh well. It's not even so, anyway. <laughs> so um, well, if you think about it, like, Inflammation necessarily isn't bad, but like if you have too much of it, then yeah. Yeah, it kind of depends. De devils are in the details, right? Right. Yeah. That's like with everything, it mm -hmm. depends. Should I eat this? It depends. <laughs> um, Can but I eat pizza? Yeah. It depends. But when are we eating the pizza? And are How you much? bringing me some? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the most True. important question. You only get brownie points if you bring brownies, and even then, it still doesn't matter. True. Um, but anyway, so you want to balance that out. So anti-inflammatory, if you think about it, it's going to be good for your joints. It's going to be good for your heart. It's going to be good for your mind. It's going to be good for a lot of things, your heart. It's almost your everything. Mood. If fish oil doesn't help it, you're probably SOL. Like, um, that's serious. Like, it helps your skin. It helps your joints. Um, it improves the circulation. So, uh, 
back to the reproductive function stuff. Um, that part of your life is going to be a little bit better if you're on fish oils. Uh, mental acuity, mood, um, it's uh, been used successfully as an antidepressant. Um, uh, mo mo by mood, I mean like it stabilizes people's moods very, very well. Um, their memories are better. Uh, their eyesight is better. Uh, their skin, uh, actually, it, it's, a, it's an anti-ager. Um, it uh, decreases death, uh, deaths uh, uh, of all causes, or decreases risk of death uh, of all causes. Um, it is a huge, 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 uh, they make fun of me because I'm like fish oil's like biggest fan, but at the same time, like read the research. The research is uh, even studies that tried to disprove that fish oil, or to try to prove that fish oil doesn't work, ended up proving uh, giving it more credence. Uh, it is an amazing, amazing supplement that people are not taking advantage of, in my opinion, uh, which can amount to whatever you want. And just wait, there's more. <laughs> it also helps with fat loss too. It does help with fat loss. How does it help with fat loss? Just down at the cellular level. Um, I haven't explained this in a while, so it might not be the best. Um, so with it, um, it helps, I believe like when, uh, so, so things enter and exit through your cell, like that's how they exchange everything. So if you have, if your cell is better able to let things in and out, that's what fish oil does. It helps it with things let in and out, then it's going to be more efficient. So it can work yeah. harder and it can work better. Yeah. It improves the efficiency of your metabolic processes. I didn't know what detail you were going to go into. Yeah, that. That. Um, and some people, like a lot of times, they'll, they'll say, well, I, I eat fish every day. It's like, okay, well, are you eating catfish or salmon? They're like, salmon. I'm like, okay, is it wild caught or, 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 uh, or raised in a farm? And they're like, I have no idea. And it's like, well, you're in Iowa, so the chances of it being wild caught and fresh and uh, are pretty low. And even if you did eat it every day, that's a big step up. But it's just so inexpensive to buy a bottle, I mean, it's like 10 cents a day and there's a huge preventative, a massive preventative measure to your health uh, that's gonna improve your immune system and I mean, everything else. So it's just like, just buy the stupid stuff and take a teaspoon a day. Um, but also if you are, uh, the thing with wild caught salmon is the salmon are eating the fish out in the ocean and the fish that they eat are eating the blue green algae that grows in the ocean and they make it into a fatty acid that then the salmon converts into a fatty acid that we can more readily use. Um, so plants basically make an a, uh, alpha lipoic acid, which is very good for us, but it doesn't get converted very well to EPA or DHA. EPA or DHA, humans convert very well into a fat that we can readily use in our bodies. So that's like the, the beginning and end of it uh, from a nature standpoint. So. Just take your, uh, you can just make this really, it. just take your, your teaspoon a day. Just do it. Just do it, yeah. <laughs> um, and this is something that we were actually talking in the meeting today, is just habit stacking. Oh yeah. Just attach it to your to something you do every day. Do you eat lunch every day? Okay, well take your vitamins and your fish oil right after your meal, or right before. Yeah, or ah, yeah I would take it before. Attach it to something you do every day. Take would, fish oil before. I would definitely take it before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, Okay, anyway, we got over a little bit about fats, the dietary versus the storage. Um, should you be scared of them? Should you go low fat on it? Should everything that you buy say low fat on it? It's probably a bad sign. It's probably not the best sign in the world anyway. I don't want to use the word good or bad. Um, fat doesn't have to make you fat, that's for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there are differences and there are places. So it's not so cut and dry as that all fat's good or all fat's bad. Uh, anyway, you have to use up your own mind, or you have to use up your own, you have to make up your own mind, and please ask us lots of questions. Questions are great. That. <laughs> yep.